although it is grossly understated, the limbo dance is undoubtedly one of the most remarkable products of the Caribbean. Julia Edwards, who masterminds and orchestrates all that happens with the Julia Edwards Dance Company, is the world's most premier exponent of that art. And we are indeed privileged and honored and honored on Culture Share today to be having before our cameras the lady herself, Julia Edwards. Julia, welcome to the cameras of Culture Share. It's Thank great to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Julia, as I said in the new opening, the limbo dance has been really grossly underplayed, underexposed and underutilized and today we've had a chance to see some of what your group has been doing. You all have been together for, for going on three decades, is it? Three decades? Yes. And you've done a whole lot in, over that period. We, we would like for you to share with us how the, the limbo dance was originated. We must let our viewers know that Julia Edwards is the person who innovated that limbo dance that is today known all over the world. She's the person who first introduced the flaming limbo and as well the human limbo. Julia, take us back to where that began and how the human and flaming limbo started uh, with started. you and your group. Mm. Well, I must say, the Americans was in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm. And we started a class, a local class, teaching them local steps, different drum rhythms and so on. But there was this one little point, and I noticed it anywhere in the world that you go to, people ask you three questions. One, what is the national dress of the country? What is the national food of the country? What is the national music and dance of the country? Mm -hmm. Now, we had the food. It was fine. Well, national dress, we cannot come to terms with that one yet. Up to today. Up to still, today. Still yes. Up in the air. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we have the beautiful sari, we have the African robes but we have not decided yet which one. But with dance and music, music, it was show, it was a steel band. Dance, we wanted something to share with our visitors. Where did Calypso fit into that whole scenario? Ah, Calypso dance, we didn't want that to really actually happen because with Calypso, we had that body contact. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want the body contact with each other. But we wanted a dance that had background, that had a history. Also, you're saying in, in trying to arrive at a national dance, you yes. didn't want to have the Calypso dance with the, the body contact. And you instead wanted to do a dance mm -hmm. that would, would represent something other than that yes. body contact thing. Oh, I see. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Now we had to go into, like, we had a, a, a small group which mm -hmm. was Holly Betodie, mm -hmm. who really managed the group. Mm -hmm. Helen Humphrey, who was the designer of all the costumes, mm -hmm. and myself. So we had to sit down and decide um, well, which one of the dances that, we would re that would really represent our country, which was Afro-West Indian. Mm -hmm. And we decided upon Limbo because, again, as I said, of the background, the history. It was like this. If a member of the family dies after the wake for nine nights, mm -hmm. you said prayers, you said the chaplet. So that's how the, the limbo used to be in its it, original form it, in the old yes, days? Yes, in the old days. The old days. Mm -hmm. Because it was religious. Mm -hmm. Now the family mm -hmm. would kneel at night when they say the chaplet and the rod was made from the wood that the coffin was made from. Mm -hmm. And they would say prayers that the low state of the departed person will move quickly from that low state to the heavens. Mm -hmm. Now that was from low to high. 
we had to change the complete concept. We had it from high to low. Humphrey, Alan Humphrey had to change the costuming because it was black and white. It used to be kind of big, sad. Yes. Yeah, that kind it of was bereavement, a big, the bereavement right. colors that yes. were so familiar. And with. in those days, they wore big white petticoats with black chemise and, you know, so real you black and them, white. Decided they wanted to use colors uh, more exotic, yes, brighter we had colors to, change to give the, give the and Caribbean we had to change flavor it. to the whole thing. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. and we had to change it to represent Trinidad because we were cosmopolitan. I see. So we came up with the format. This short candle for the African, the bells for the East Indians, and the hair tie, Spanish and French style. So we had our African and our East Indian joining. So you Even incorporated the, rhythm, the, the, yes, the various with, ethnic groups right, in, the, in the dress. Into the dress and into the rhythms. Oh, the drum I rhythms. Mm -hmm. The drum rhythms, you notice, would change during the oh, complete yes, dance. Yes. Yes, it will change from East Indian to African, back to East Indian, and end with the African. Mm -hmm. There's an interesting history about the limbo, the limbo dance. Very, very interesting history. Julia carries with her some enviable history as a choreographer here in Trinidad and indeed the Caribbean. In her homeland of Trinidad and Tobago, Julia has figured prominently in so much of what has been historic, particularly dating back to 1962. 1960 was a very significant year for Trinidad and Tobago. It was the year when we achieved independence. In that year as well, the Hilton Hotel, the very famous Hilton Hotel, came into being. As well, the, the country's premier concert hall, the, the Queen's Hall, they also threw open their, their doors to the public. and. The first national television station, TTT, came on stream in that very year. And Julia figured prominently in the opening of all of these three major entities. Julia, tell us about your experience with the Hilton and that history-making exercise where your group performed at the very uh, opening of the Hilton in 19, 1962. 1962. I mean, if I go back to 1962, it was a fantastic year. I'm sure that it was. I'm sure that it ah, was. Ah, fantastic here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very What was it good. like at the Hilton? Oh, the, uh, that, that opening oh, in the opening. Uh, Mr. Hilton was there himself. And yes. we opened with the... Um, what dances did you all we do? We did the limbo. Oh, and yeah? we did the dance of the Caribs. Mm -hmm. Now, the Caribs and Araraks was the first settlers of Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Right. And we danced on the grounds of the Hilton, on that hillside. And Mr. Hilton and his complete um, party, they really in, enjoyed. I am what, sure the, yes. the, the exotic stuff that you guys oh, displayed. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, then, uh, let's go back to the Queen's Hall. The Queen's Hall. Mm -hmm. The Queen's Hall. Which stands uh, oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. in the day. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, when we started Limbo, again, Limbo was under funeral rites. So mm -hmm. we had to start moving along and getting people excited and we said uh, then what are we going to try we're going to move away from just the plain rod and add fire which would add excitement oh right oh, I see. oh yes now the flambeaux that we use mm -hmm. again There's in those days that. oh mm -hmm. yes in those days you have to use the flambeau that was the light the light of the whole thing. Because on the ninth night, mm -hmm. it was called the victory night, the bongo night. Tonight is the bongo night. That was the victory night. The night of life, victory of life over death. Mm -hmm. And the flambeaux played a very important part because when they did this, it was, you know, in the big yards and the flambeau really mm -hmm. was showing the light and showing you Tell us, about the, tell us about the TTT experience, the first television station in the island, and you all were part of oh, that yes. exercise as they oh, came yes. on stream. Tell us about that. What, what was that experience like, and who oh, were some of the people in the television business when it originated then? Oh, it was Hazel Ward, oh. Redman, 
is the woman who is oh, still yes. around today. Who is still around today. Oh, so interesting. Today. Mm -hmm. Yes, Holly Batode. He's also still around. Yes. And there was um, there's so many of them that it was a long time now, ago. What did, what did you all do on the, the television yes, performance? Yes, again, we pushed Limbo. Mm -hmm. Because then we were going on, we were going on limbo on television mm -hmm. for the first time, really with the limbo mm -hmm. and with the fire and the excitement of everything, mm -hmm. and that was something to remember. I could well imagine, Julia. Yes. So many people who have, who have started dance companies here have opted to go ballet, mm -hmm. they've opted to go to all other aspects of dance, but you've held on to folk. Yes. What is the conviction that you we have for folk dance? Where is that? Where is that conviction coming from? You see, always we are a dancing people. Like in the Caribbean, you have like Barbados, they are noted for singers. Trinidad, we are noted for dancers. We dance Calypso, we dance Mass, we dance in Carnival. We are a dancing people. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when we go way, way back and we remembered all that was handed down to us because remember we were ruled by the french mm -hmm. by the spaniards by the english we were really really cosmopolitan mm -hmm. but we had to hold on for what belonged to us and what belonged to us was the rhythms of the drums mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now you couldn't dance ballet to drums what you mean? Right. Right. So there's, right. There's, a, there's a very serious yes. marriage yes. of the drum yes. and, to the dance. and the dance. And the dance. Mm -hmm. yes. I see. I see. It, it, it is it's very fast moving. Very, mm -hmm. very, very excited. All explain our dances. The, explain the relation, of, the relation of the drum to the dance. Uh, the drums. The drums are like, let's take for instance, like if the farmers had a good crop. Mm -hmm. Always, they would want the drummers to drum, oh, so great. that we could give thanks. And it goes from the dance to the drums, again to the heavens, to the gods. Is that interrelation? Is that spiritual yes. thing? That's all of that happening there, thing. and people take yes. a lot of all of that for granted. We, we, you know, we come and we look at the dance on the stage, and we. Say, oh, it looks all right, and we applaud, and we go mm -hmm. home. But there's a lot of history, a lot a of lot, spirituality lot. behind it. Yes. So much that we've yes. not been told about. Yes.